Now that we understand what parameter channels are, let's use some HScript to drive some of these values. For example, let's try a very simple um, variable, the dollar sign $f is a very commonly used variable within Houdini to drive the uniform scale parameter of the sphere. So the dollar sign $f represents the current frame within our scene. So if we play back our timeline, we will see how the sphere grows depending on the current frame we're in. So in this case, in frame 1, we'll have a scale of 1. In frame 24, the scale would, will be 24. Frame 12, the scale will, will be 12, etc. So that's a very simple way of using a script within this channel. So let's get acquainted with some of the H script variables available and then we'll come back and use some examples. There are three kind of variables within H script. The H script environment variables, the H script global variables, and the H script local variables. The environment variables are more a generic kind of uh, value. For example, the dollar sign hip variable tells us in which folder the current Houdini file is saved in. Or another very useful environment variable is the dollar sign hip name, which tells us the name of the current uh, Houdini file. The global variables are more a generic use of variables, and they're usually present regardless of what the, the file is named or where it's saved. For example, we already used the dollar sign $f variable that tells us the current frame uh, we're in. The dollar sign $t variable is similar to the uh, F variable, except it's tell, it, it tells us the time th or the current time we're in. For example, 1 second, 1.5 seconds, etc. A uh, few other useful global variables are the dollar sign $FF, which gives us uh, fractional frames. For example, we could be generating a simulation and we probably n probably need uh, subframe information or probably a rendering and we need a fraction of a frame the dollar sign ff would give us that information or even the frames per second with the dollar sign fps variable now the third kind of variable the local variables exist only within certain nodes that's why they're local because they only they can only be used in a specific node so we will see um, many of these variables in in a practical way but this is just a a partial reference of some of the variables i, I use uh, over and over so back in Houdini, let's see some of these variables used in a more practical way. I will create a very simple box. I will dive into the geometry node and change off some of the box's parameters. I'll make it a bit higher, move it upward, and probably make it a bit thinner too. So in a previous exercise, we saw how to use the $f variable within a channel to change the values of the sphere. Uh, this time, we can try to use the $t instead. So remember, $t is the time. So if we now play the animation, we'll see how the box grows. The thing is that this time, for example, in frame 24, the value 
of the height will be one. So we can click on a parameter to see its value or click again to see which variable is driving that parameter. So in this case, if we, we were to scroll to frame 48, we would see that the height is two units. So we can revert back to the numeric value if we control shift click on a channel. So that way we can get rid of the variable. In this case, I will manually go back to value of two. And let's use a few of um, a very useful uh, variables. So let's add a transform node below the box. And say we wanted to create an animation of the rotating box. For example, say we want to rotate the box, but not along the base. In this case, the default for the transform node is the, the world origin, in this case, 0, 0, 0. But let's say we want to rotate this box from the center. So let me go back to, to the default values and expand the pivot transform. And in the Y axis, I will use the variable CEY, which gives us the centroid of the object. In this case, the centroid on the Y axis. So now take a look how the pivot moved to the exact center of the box. And if we were to change or rotate the box, now the rotation would be centered as expected. So let's combine the T variable, the time. So no, uh, no need to create, no need to create uh, keyframes. We'll just use a variable. So it's rotating very slowly, but it is rotating. Let's try to use the frame instead. So it rotates much faster. So we can start to see the, the use and how practical can this be. Sometimes just a simple variable can go a, a long way. So what I'm going to do now is to further change the pivot position and I will also cache the animation sequence, probably to share the sequence with other artists or probably use the sequence in another file. And I will do this using a few other very useful variables. So for the X position of the pivot, I will use a variable called X max. So notice how the pivot jumped to the rightmost position of the of the box. So X max will take the incoming geometry and analyze its rightmost position and use that value. We can also use the X min to use the leftmost position of the incoming geometry. So I'm going to also change the Y position. Instead of using the centroid, I'm using, I will use the Y min to make the box rotate more as a hinge. I think I'll stick with that. And now I will use a wrap node, a wrap geometry output to save the sequence. So I'll probably just save 24 frames for now. I will change the name of the wrap node to rotating box. 
And notice how uh, by default the output file is already using some hscript variables. So we talked about the dollar sign hip variable, which is the folder where the current Houdini file is located. So I will leave that as is, that's very useful. It will also generate a folder called geo. And the name of the actual file will be the combination of the Houdini name. In this case, the dollar hip name variable is telling us what the Houdini file is named. And here is a new variable, $OS. $OS is telling us the name of the actual node. So in this case, the, the name of the outco outgoing file will be the combination of the file name, the node name, plus the dollar sign $F. Remember, that's the current frame it will give us a suffix, a uh, numbered suffix. That's very useful, of course, because this is a sequence. The only thing that I will change is add a number four after the frame variable. This will give us a padding of four numbers. And I think that's ready to go. I'll just change the frame range from one to 24 and hit save to disk. Now if we dive into the folder where we have our file saved, we can see the geo folder. And here is our sequence of files. We can load the sequence back in Houdini with a file load. So go to the hip folder within the geo folder and here is our sequence. So remember this dollar sign F4 will give us a four number padding, in this case 0, 0, 0, 0001, 0, 0, 0, 0002, etc. So I will double click here to load the file. And here we can see the actual cache. So after frame 24, we have no information, so it, it will disappear. 